What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Banger, 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 Ruthie's uh, coming. There's one. My grandma's coming. I've been thinking about. I was like, I'm a. She gonna. She never heard me do sex jokes. Oh it's my god. So and she's going to. I mean, she knows who I am. I've made a lot of great jokes in the I presence mean, of her company. Called her while we were here to find out if she had been taken down because you You're thought right. she was celibate. So. You're right, and she wasn't celibate down in El Paso, Texas. Of she course, was she her, wasn't. That, that uh, I was trying to think of the <laughs> Spanish slang word for coochie, but I don't. Know. El cuchero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Houston, Texas next week. Two shows are sold out there, and the other two are closing in fast. Uh, the Sunday late got plenty of room, though. Uh, Dallas, there is literally, I put up, there's five of six shows sold out. That six show only has like eight tickets left, and that's the in October. The rest are just chairs outside. They just fold up. Just yeah, D.C. sold out. The only thing that's sucking is Palm Beach in Miami. Let me tell you what, single me out. Next year, not coming. Oh, no. You don't <laughs> think they're going to show up? No. You don't think I they... always struggle in Miami. Always. Palm Beach, Miami, and Las Vegas, you're out. Forever. No, not no. forever, but at least next year. I guarantee you I'm not coming to Miami Beach or Palm Beach. Miami or Palm Beach next Why week. not? Why not Miami? Because they don't be selling. Last time I sold out, but that was just a one night. But Palm Beach, I am sucking it up. Oh, no. All right. Let's begin. First things first. First things first. Uh, Lizzo is going kind of through a rough patch mm. uh, with... I will say the Twitter part of the black community, uh -huh, right? Because I don't know if this is widespread, but right. on Twitter, a large amount of black people have decided they don't like Lizzo's music, which is your choice, right? right? What I don't get uh, with her specifically, actually, I do get why it happens. You can't just say I don't like her music, right? People can't just say that. Right. It's not like somebody saying, I don't like maybe Janae Aiko's music. Like people, I don't know how I would choose her. Just any artist, Janae what do you Aiko. Mean that you can't say. You're saying that's not no, no, what they're choosing. That's what I'm say. saying. Okay. People can't just say, you know what, this uh -huh. music's not for me. Let me go on about my I day. Get what, you're saying. Uh -huh. what they end up saying about her music is she makes music for white people mm. or she is pushing this mammy narrative. Which is right. crazy. So if you know about the mammy thing, the whole thing about it is she was fat and black. Right. But she was desexualized. Yes. So Lizzo's whole being is not desexualized. She's very sexual. She's There's nothing maternal about what she does because mammy was all about maternal, domesticated. There's nothing about... Nothing about Lizzo. Mm. If anything, they would... A more accurate representation of what... Uh, or a critique, if you were going to make one, is the Jezebel trope. Right. Not the Mammy. The, oh, I think they just see fat and fat, and they're like, Mammy. Mammy. Yeah. Je yeah. But I, I think to put that on her means you don't know what the Mammy trope was all about at all. At all. At you all. You know? Uh, and um, it got to her, right? Yeah. The, the Mammy thing got to her, and the... Uh, and the uh, she doesn't make music for black people got to her. So she was crying the other day in a live. I'll play it. I have people who have something. Something mean to say about you. And for the most part, it doesn't hurt my feelings. I don't care. I just think when uh, I'm working this hard, my my tolerance gets lower. My patience is lower. I'm more sensitive. And it gets to me. Okay, so here's how I feel about Lizzo. Her. Tell me. I really like Lizzo. You do? I do. She's she's fun. 
She plays the Twitter and twerks. I remember when she start, first started going viral on Twitter, it was her playing the, uh, I mean, I think I she plays the I was like the Twitter She plays the flute. <laughs> and <laughs> plays the flute. It's been a long couple of weeks. It's okay. It's she okay, plays friend. the flute and twerks. She has fun. Uh, this all started back up again. She had been off Twitter for a minute. Uh-huh. Literally a long time. She was like, it's too much. But her rumors video came out last week mm-hmm. with... Uh, Cardi B. Cardi B. Mm-hmm. And it reignited the whole Lizzo thing. And I know she, as soon as she came back on Twitter, she was like, this is why I was gone. When I listened to the song, I was like, this is a Lizzo song. Mm-hmm. When I watched the video, I was like, oh, this reminds me of uh, the muses from Hercules. Her- That's what I said to Which Josh. I, I said, this is Hercules. I yeah. was like, I would like a live action Hercules with Lizzo as one of the muses. Uh-huh. I watched the video. I went about my day. Yeah. Right. It was a Lizzo song. Mm-hmm. Right. It was great. I like it. Uh, it was catchy. You know, it was pop music. I never thought, oh, here goes Lizzo making music for white people again. Oh, I don't like it. And the thing that's interesting about this, I don't know if she said this. A couple of people said this uh, early in Whitney Houston's career. The black community was like, she don't make black people music. She used to get booed. Uh-huh. Uh, she got booed at, I don't remember what award show was, but she got booed by a black people. I think it might have been the Soul Train Awards, but that's correct me what, if I'm wrong. Uh, that's what Lizzo said. I don't know if she's correct. Oh, though. she did say that? Yeah, she said it in her video. Yeah, and black people did, like, used to be on Whitney because she made pop Meaning, music. Meaning, I don't know if um it was the Soul Train Awards. I'm saying that is what Lizzo said. I did not, oh, like, got fact it. check to be like, yes, it was. And apparently, Al Sharpton, I don't know if this is true. Oh, no. Uh... I saw um, a poster where he was like boycott Whitney. I don't know. Oh no! Apparently he might have he might have done it. <laughs> apparently he, he did. He might have done a, bo- a boycott of of Whitney Houston. Apparently he did a boycott. He, he called for a boycott of Whitney Houston because she made uh, popular music. That's what pop is short for popular music. Yeah. Uh, so as a woman, uh, who is black as well, Angel, how do you feel about, uh, this? Um, I, I guess I will never understand if, if Twitter is so toxic, why do people go there? Gluttons for punishment. Uh, That, that's where I would start. Like a parent, like, obviously I can understand why Lizzo's feelings are hurt because, who wants to be tore down just for how they look aesthetically and then not even have uh, any correlating things that they're saying about it to call her a mammy is just like, you're just throwing out. Yeah, terms. You're just saying just stupid stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah. it's obvious that she has a strong fan base because she's extremely successful. There are people yes. who like her music. Absolutely. So um, I guess, I am a little bit perturbed because I don't want to see her like this. And the toxic people aren't going to change their toxic. Oh, they love it. They revel in it. So I would be like, don't, don't go where they are. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't allow them to have space in your life when they don't have to have space in your life. And I understand you can't always escape it. So I'm not trying to be um, naive and be like, girl, just ignore them. You can't hear them. Sometimes their voices are going to peep or going to make it to your ears and the things that they're saying. But if, if this is existing in the world of Twitterverse, well, I think it starts on Twitter in her situation. I think it spreads to other social media uh-huh. and it goes to shade room. And in her comments, I think Twitter is just bigger mm-hmm. and the conversation begins there. But I don't think it's just like, I don't like, like you said, I don't think it's easy. It's like, Oh, I'm not going to go on Twitter. Let me close that. And then I'm not going to see it's it. Big, the bigger you get, the, the um, higher your star rises I do believe just because people are jerks, um, you have to be so much more protective of like your, I guess your psyche. So like trying your best to avoid those people, because like she said, it's when she works hard is when she's the most vulnerable to these comments. Absolutely. Because it does take a lot of energy ignoring negativity or blocking ne- negativity. It takes a lot of energy to be like, in spite of your comments, I'm going to fully believe in what I'm doing and who I am, especially if the comments seem so much louder than the praise. And that's always the case. You could have on a gorgeous white outfit, but if you get a little red stain on it, your eyes go to that. That's true. So um, I don't know. Uh, I say this not just for her, but for you. Kevin Fredericks. Mm. Put on my glasses so I can hear you better. (laughs) 
the higher you climb, the more people are going to want to tear you down. The more people are going to be looking for your flaws. You're not a perfect human being, but I don't think you've ever claimed to be. Never claimed. I'm but, heavy. Um, the more people are going to look for your flaws. So the more you have to make diligently protect what yeah. you allow your eyes to see, your ears to hear, and making sure that the people around you are also well, the, not the people you around there. me they are they are also say harsh things. Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be one of them. They are angels. One Josh to hear absolutely my children. Uh, I think my days on Twitter as a platform I use constantly are numbered. Uh, a good portion of negativity over the last couple of years has started and been f- fanned by the flames of Twitter. Twitter as a platform, I've said this before, gets it's getting increasingly more and more toxic and um, uh, cynical yeah. than it is fun. Uh, I have found material... I, I, I use Twitter mainly for material, for mm-hmm. videos and podcasts. They, they are the conversation leader. Uh, but in order to see that, you got to see some other awful things. Like, for example, yesterday I was looking for topics for today's podcast. And I saw an Afghan plane, oh a plane God. in Afghanistan leaving and people trying to climb on the outside of it and falling off. And I was like, oh. And Josh had told me about this, Excuse but me, I, I hadn't. he told you. I was like, oh, cool. I will just avoid this. But because, and maybe I need to turn my autoplay off. Um, Because Twitter's autoplaying, I just saw it and I was like, well, that was. You can never unsee that. Wow. That didn't even seem like something real. Like I recognize that's a real thing that happened. But my mind was like, wow. And I think a lot of that, I I think we, as uh, uh, society people who, people in society who see that stuff, then we get desensitized to what we're actually seeing. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's why, like, the black people getting killed by the police and all that stuff. I'd be like, bro, I don't, I, I've seen enough and I, I cannot get those images out of my head. I don't mm-hmm. want to add any more. I only saw one and I said, and that was by accident. That was, yeah, I never seek them out. Uh, but no, now I, you talk about a void. Like yeah. when it, when, when I hear in the zeitgeist, like I start to hear when I hear, um, Angel, did you hear about? That's when I'll be like, so I guess I won't be on social media yeah. here for a little bit because yeah. I don't want it. I do not want it. Um, and so definitely para ti and for her is a para, uh, para, para, para her. Um, I want women para ella. Para ella. I, I think want, para her is correct. I'm sorry, Josh. I think you're incorrect. Para her, I believe, is the correct No, Spanish. it's para ella. I know because I take Babel classes. Uh, yeah. And Babel is our first sponsor of today's episode. And let me tell you what. <laughs> um, as the summer starts to dwindle down, people are still able to get these last-minute vacations in, and the um, borders are opening up a little bit in different countries. So you want to be able to go visit, see other cultures. We've been locked in our houses for the past year and a half. So we're trying to see some people, okay? We're trying to do some things. And you can learn the language of the place you're going to with Babbel. Babbel is the number one selling language learning app. Number one or no, number un, numero uno? Numero uno. Me, me, mayor? El mayor? El mayor. El, el, el mayor. mayor. The, mejor. Me, mejor. Mejor. M-E-J-O-R. Yes. The best is what I say it. Um... And here's some of the reasons why they're so great. They use over 100 language experts to create the app. It's not a bunch of artificial intelligence like a a lot of the other learning apps. So you don't have to think of this as one of those boring classes you took in high school and middle school, and that's the reason why you can't speak the language now. (laughs) This is actually going to teach you useful terms that you would use in conversation. They have so many different languages. It's uh, 14, and they include Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent because I do know that it's something important when speaking different languages is getting the accent right, not just the pronunciation. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Let me tell you, games, people don't realize how good games can help you learn a different language. Yes, that's true. Um, I remember uh, playing a game that uh, dealt with, like, numbers. 
in being able to like do the math in Spanish and then figure out the numbers. I'm just saying, give Babbel a try, okay? Because they have a bunch of different ways to help you learn. So this is what we want you to do. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you will get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code SK. SK. One more time, let me tell you, if you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three by going to Babbel.com and using the promo code SK. 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 I increasingly have um, decided that um, the stage crew is where I'll focus. Uh, Non-stage crew, st stage crewers, less focus. Um, I think the audience that we built is enough for a lifetime. Uh, usually the further you stray outside of your audience, the more likely you are not to be welcomed. Uh, especially on Twitter. And I think the, the whole thing of Twitter is just everything sucks. Nothing's good. Nothing's enjoyable. All the shows are bad. Everything is toxic. Everything is wrong. Everything's problematic. There's nothing universally loved on there. Not Obama, not Beyonce, not right. pork, not gluten, not coffee, not water. Everything sucks Everything balls. sucks. Balls, musty, sweaty, post-basketball, pre-shower, donkey balls. Oh, yes. Jace. Yeah. Jace. <laughs> so uh, that is an another lesson uh, that I have learned. I'm learning on my own. Uh, everybody don't love you, no matter who you are. Mm. You won't be universally loved regardless. So expecting that is uh, is ridiculous. Um, and also, you know, Tank said uh, most, a lot of successful artists don't make music for black people, and they do just fine. If you think I about Michael about Jackson, say, my husband say that, but you he mean said it in here. My husband said it. Mm -hmm. He on here. Hi, babe. Yeah, and then, he on I, here. When, then when you said music, I was like, is he talking about Tank the artist? But oh. you were talking about Tank my husband tank said the, it. Tank the, yeah. your husband. But Michael Jackson, for example, I'm not saying he didn't make music for black people. I'm saying most of those concerts of people passing out, large majority of the audience is non-black. I would, I would venture to say, and people might not agree with me, that when Michael went... Uh, solo, solo. I don't think his focus was us at all. I don't. I don't. Not to say we didn't love yeah, everything yeah, yeah. he did, but it did not feel like he was like, what would the blacks love? Yeah. It seemed like he was being very true to hit what he wanted to do. And I, that's what it feels like. For Lizzo, it feels like she's doing what is true to what she wants to do, which is not mostly my cup of tea. Yeah. But I'm not sitting here thinking, well, why ain't you singing to me? I'm a black woman. Sing to me, Lizzo. There's a lot of, the thing about music is find what you like. There's yes. always somebody making something for you. Yes. Right. There's or they'll just, make a version of it for you. Yes. Case in point, this, this Essence song, right? We was just talking about it's been this. popping, but they wanted to give it a shot to go number one with the Justin Bieber effect. The same way that he hopped on Despacito, this Song had already been out for almost a year. Was it really that long? Yeah, October. Oh, snap. Oh, you talking about Essence or Despacito? Essence. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, but it's, and then also it's the same way that uh, Beyonce hopped on. Mega Stallion's thing? No, no, no. What was cool. that? Uh, oh, it my was gosh. A Latin, it was yeah. a Latin song. Yeah. I know what you're talking they're, about. They're, they're going to do what? Uh, music business is music business. They going to do, and that number one means a lot. Did it mm -hmm. go number one? With essence, uh, yeah, uh, it it probably will. It hasn't been out a week, but I I would assume it will. I didn't even realize that was the name of that song. I've been hearing that song everywhere. It's been used in a lot of TikToks and reels yes. to show your love. I just used it for brand deal. I said, "Oh, this is perfect." Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful song. There was a whole discussion about that on Twitter as well about <laughs> by adding Justin Bieber to this is Afro Beats going to be is it cultural appropriation? of Afrobeats by introducing it to white people are are you now um lessening it somehow it's, and i'm like it's whisk kid right yeah but the thing is whisk kid is a tier 1 artist anywhere else like he's sold out the O2 multiple times really yes nigerian right nigerian r&b lagos yes yeah um and tims is is nigerian as well i believe so yeah i mean listen if if we keep making stuff that's hot 
that's fire. We always gonna do it. Then we gonna oh, have yeah. to realize that the Wahites is gonna be like, give me a taste, give me some of that. Give me, Look, give me a let taste. Me, <laughs> see what let it me do, like. let me see what it tastes like. Black people since the dawn of time have decided what was cool. We are tastemakers. We are tastemakers. As small as we are of a percentage of a population and percentage of America, even as downtrodden as we were when we were enslaved in the Jim Crow South. You could never take away our cool mm-hmm. in our clothing, in our music, in our language. Mm-hmm. We and listen, I listen, white people, you probably ain't watched this podcast. I'm sure there's some of you there. I was trying to think of some slang and stuff that I got from black people. I mean, from white people or dance move where I was like, then white people really got it going outside of the English language. But I mean, like cool stuff. I, I, I couldn't think of many things that My white people introduced me to when he went. Oh, that dab. Oh, the little boy. <laughs> he looked like he was defending himself. <laughs> the kid, you got to put it in, Joshua. And put it in for real. Because I be asking you to put something in and like you don't be putting put it in. When was the last time you asked me to put something in and I didn't put it in? Three weeks ago. Anyway, the kids are doing this. <laughs> that oh, is the most lie. Three, <laughs> Three weeks. Three weeks ago? The, the kid before that kid came back and hit it again. And that kid, the, the funniest part of his dab was his face. Face. It he was, was a facial like, expression. <laughs> it was no. It looked like hurt. It did not look like I hit it. It looked like <laughs> that's what it looked like. Like I am in so much pain. Ah! But uh, but anyway, the best to Lizzo. I say absolutely. twerk, play your flute, let the people who like you like you. Actually, no name a rapper. She one of the reasons she got sick of the music industry is because all the people in her crowds were white. And they were saying nigga and stuff in the... Well, yeah. That, and she that, was just that, like, this just... I can't... Yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. When I went to Beyonce concert, I was expecting a lot of black people. There was blacks, but it was oh. mostly white and mostly gay. Oh, yeah. Okay, listen. And the gay you, babies, we be in the... Uh, me and the little gay babies, we be in the beehive. You hear me? Let me tell and, you what. They buy merch. Listen. Beyonce's the money she made outside the gates. Mm-hmm. I was like, and also Chance the Rapper. When we saw, me and Josh saw him at the Hollywood Bowl. Mm. I was like, y'all are selling merch. And them shirts be expensive. 65. 65 yeah. for a t-shirt that's that's going to shrink as soon what? as you look. If you uh, even walk through something that has moisture, that t-shirt going to be a crop top. And <laughs> even the, 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 the hustlers selling the bootleg outside yes. of the, of the real yes. are making a killing. Yes. I'll never forget hearing how much uh, Kanye made in one night at MSG was uh, like close to seven million. Seven it's, million? I that's what I heard after, after all said and done. Oh, those. I was talking about one night of the Pablo tour. He did like close to close to a million in one night. But you're right. This past the uh, Mercedes Benz situation for a listening party on an unfinished album, which also brings up the point. I don't know. Have we? Did we, did you think Kanye was canceled at any point? Uh, you not. I don't. I don't know how he, that would happen. As I long don't. as Kanye keeps making, it's like <laughs> anybody. As long as they keep making music, somebody going to show up. Listen, mm-hmm. Kanye, I believe after, after let's just go from slavery was a choice, which is maybe two years ago now. Mm-hmm. That was, had to be, no, that was pre-pandemic, longer. right? It feels longer. It feels like three years ago. It might have been. No, it was. Because I remember uh, in the I don't documentary. Think I was pregnant. When we showed your... Really? Might I have been 16. Yeah, it feels like a while ago. I don't think okay, I... Okay, it looks like going, May 2018. Or 17 going into 18. 2018, okay. Yeah, All yeah. the articles pop out May 2018. So I, we'll, we'll go from that point saying a lot of people were like, I'm done with Kanye. Mm-hmm. Since then, I believe he came became a billionaire. He got the Gap deal after that. He had all the Yeezy uh, stuff continue He's released albums that everybody on Twitter was talking about, listening to. People went to Wyoming and listened to. Um, he just made, he sold out Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Twice. For a listening party of an unfinished album by his own admission. I'm not like even making fun of him. Yeah. He admitted it wasn't done. It, it still hasn't come out as of yet. It's supposed to be out a couple weeks ago. Uh, $7 million in merch during that. So if that's canceled, you know. Right. <laughs> wow. I don't want to know what, like, I don't, if that's if him being was, canceled. If he was uncanceled, how much better would he be doing? Man. 
Because that's ridiculous. It's a can- if that's what it looks like to be canceled, go ahead and cancel me. But also, there was a lot of mostly white people at those shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mostly white people buying those. That, that hip hop, listen, if it was just black people uh, buying Kanye's music, he's, he's not making And buying his uh, merch and stuff like that. And even back to like, uh, Ice Cube and them. They were like, bro, at our at our shows, it was a lot of white kids, suburban white kids feeling the angst uh, of a black uh, black uh, youth talking about police. Somehow, white kids in suburban Minnesota was like, yes, mm-hmm. I too feel this. Mom, more meatloaf, you know. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of suburban, please, we watched the Malice in the Palace documentary. Did, did. we not? Oh, and let what? me tell you what. <laughs> Oh, he said, oh, what? No, I watched it now. First of all, my mind, things being so far in time. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. My mind is like, that was that long ago? How long ago was that? Even just how stuff looked. The yes. footage, how blurry stuff was. Oh, yeah. It was VHS. Relation. They said uh, every camera uh, in the palace had a VHS man, tape that taped said, everything. How'd y'all find anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was it was work. November 19th, 2004. I remember I, I was, was watching, watching game. this game. Yeah, me too. Okay. Melissa and I had I not been married, but three months. You were alive, Joshua. You were wow. 11 years old. Wow. Three months married, Kevin. We were Lewis. three months old. This is, I mean, three months old. We were three <laughs> months married, or something like that. I used uh-huh. to watch way more sports then. Uh-huh. I was watching this game. Um, I didn't even remember Reggie Miller was on the Pacers because I never saw him at he the mountain. He wasn't Mallard. on the court. He was suited up, right? Yeah, he, he was, was he suited. Was, he, was, he, had a, he had a hurt wrist, and it just he didn't click. Because uh-huh. I didn't remember when Reggie Miller retired. I watched a lot of basketball, but I'm not like, if you didn't win the championship that year, you didn't know who it doesn't know. click. I remember the Pistons being good. I remember the Pacers were that good, mm-hmm. but they were. But I was watching that game, and I was just like, man, this is like really testy for a game to be almost over. You know, yeah. like this is, this is a lot going on. And the first thing I want to say about it that was really interesting is all of the stuff going on in those players' lives yeah. outside of basketball. Yeah. I was like, now it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. It humanizes everybody. It really did. Ben Wallace just lost his brother. Right. Ron Artest tried to retire at the beginning of the season. The NBA wouldn't let him. He was mm. like, I'm not. They're mentally mentally going yes. through depression and anxiety. Well, here's the yeah. thing about it. Remember, mental health oh, as, yeah. a, as a topic of respect and mm-hmm. with care, less than five years old yeah. to, in, in my life. Mm-hmm. Back then, hush. No, oh, yeah. Shut up and dribble. Wait a minute. The back then, it's still. Do you it's see still. how they got on these, the tennis player? They were like. True, true. Oh, you want to take a break. Oh, oh, Gabby. But she's getting defended. She's getting defended some. If that yes. was back then, she wouldn't have gotten defended at all. Absolutely. I don't know if she could even have, she might have got dropped by everybody. Yeah, I feel like, to your point, they yeah. still went at her, but a lot of people were defending her. I don't think, in 2004, I don't even know she feels no. like she can actually do that. She might have just lost Oh, and absolutely. I'm saying the institutions that, like, are the ones that put out the fi- penalties, the ones oh, that, yeah. yeah, they are still have the same mentality 1, of you are a machine. When I say put, turn the machine on, it better turn on. It can't Absolutely. be talking about I am having a mental breakdown. It, it, Simone Biles during the Olympics. That's what I was, uh-huh. For her, uh, I, knew, I knew what you meant. People Gabby. saying. Did I said Gabby? Uh, I knew what you meant, though. God yeah, dang it. It's okay. Simone, I mean, uh, yes, yeah, Simone. That's the black mama. Yeah. That's who I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but knows, you see, I didn't even say the tennis player's name. Naomi Osaka. Uh huh. <laughs> her too. I wasn't going to try. I wasn't going to disrespect her. So, uh, her name. for Simone, I, I never. Here's the thing about this, and we'll get sorry, back to Sorry, we'll go back. That's I'm okay. so sorry. If Simone had said she tore her knee up, right? Nobody cares. Yeah. She hurt her knee in training. She's out. It's fine. What she described, um, she basically, it, it, it's called the twisties. Uh, when she uh-huh. said it, she said, I, I just, I'm not right. People are like, you better get out there. And the first thing I thought of, if your mind is not right and you are flipping upside down, you can break your neck. And then when you dead, people will be like, you might have should have sat out after Ke- you're dead. Kevin, this is what I've been trying to get people to understand. The only reason why I can't do that jump is because mentally I'm exhausted from the tour. Because we got so many dates. We're doing the food show. That's the reason why I can't do the screen jump. That's why. I, you, and, but nobody understands. That's what it is. That's what it is. So I understood when I watched Malice in the da- in the palace. Yeah. I said, that's what I'm going through. That's what you go Because mentally, your mind is there. Uh, uh, right? no, no, my body is there. Right. Mentally, though. Right. So when you, when you see me. Right. Now, don't show off and hit when your head. you see me and I'm like. 
Yeah, boom. You you want to do or, that? Or when you see me, Angel. Oh, oh, oh. when you see J- Josh. Come on. When you see Josh. Get over here. You and know, <laughs> I don't got the right shorts on. <laughs> you know, when you go here. Yep, uh-huh. yep. And then. Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And see, and then when I do it. Yes, go ahead, Angel. This is going to be the time. This is going to be the time, Angel. This. You got it! You did! I told you! I knew you were gonna get it, Angel! Yes! Yes! Y'all didn't know! Yes! You got it! I pissed a little bit, but I did that thing! Talk nice to Angel! Let's go! (laughs) Talk nice! In the skirt! In the skirt! In the skirt! Hey! Name! (laughs) Name! Name! That was so funny! (laughs) You just did it! See, because I needed to reset, you know what I'm saying? Angel, Loki, I had my hand back. I was like, please just don't fall backwards. Thank you, Joshua. (laughs) You are a good friend. You are a good friend. You did it, Angel. I knew you was going to get it. I See, knew you was going to so get it. So did I. That's why I've been practicing every day. <laughs> every day since that day that I couldn't do it here, I've been practicing. And it paid off. <sighs> oh, that was good. You're about to get the cops call on That was worth everything. Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> I was going to put this on my vision board. The perfect, <laughs> the perfect cartwheel. <laughs> you I know just, what? I'm, I'm glad you did it because if you would have fell and broke your neck, you would have had to use policy, policy genius. genius. Policy yes. genius. Angel. Listen, because let me tell you right now, if I go out, I got to take care of my family. All you right? got to. And that's what I was thinking in that hotel. I said, Angel, you bust your head open on the back side of this bed. <laughs> I hope your policy is together. Your life is short. But let me tell you about Policy Genius. They help you find the right policy for you, okay? Because it's sometimes very overwhelming when you're trying to compare what is the right policy, how you can make sure you're spending your money the right way. Well, Policy Genius is like, hold on. Like, we got your back. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you can save up to 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You can save... 1300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. And this is what great is great. It's licensed experts at Policy Genius that are working for you. It's not the insurance companies cuz insurance companies they always going to try to make themselves sound like they're the best place for you even if they're not. Where Policy Genius is like, "Listen, we don't work for them. We work for you. We want to make sure that you are set up in a way that you feel secure that you are leaving your family um uh, what's necessary for them to be able to survive in case you uh, perish, mm. as they say. So this is what you have to do. You get started very easy. You hit a policygenius.com. In a minute, you work out how much life insurance cover you, you need and compare personalized quotes to get your best price. When you're ready to apply, Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and scheduling for free. If y'all don't know how invaluable that is. Man, it makes it so much easier. So much easier. It can be so overwhelming trying to do it all on your own. <clears throat> and Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. <sighs> Y'all, I don't, this is a no-brainer. No-brainer, No-brainer. What you need to do is head to policygenius.com to get started. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. And listen, when we're talking about money, when you uh, take care of your family, when you pass on, let's also talk about money while you're here. While you're here. Okay, and that's why we're excited about Chime. Chime. Okay, it's a your bank account should work for you, not against you. Amen. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card with no hidden feeds or monthly premiums. Free overdraft on up to $200 in debit purchases with SpotMe is like draft over uh overdraft protection but better. These fees that these banks be charging you, especially if you're not in a place where you're living in um like uh, you have a lot of extra income, right? Discretionary income. When you get hit with a fee of three seventy five that you weren't expecting and you didn't budget it down it's to the mess last you penny, up, Angel. they about to mess you up. And then you're going to be in the hole even more than that three seventy five, right? But Chime is like, we're not going to do that to you, okay? Because mm-hmm. we don't have any hidden fees. And you can get that overdraft protection for up to $200. Um, excuse me, get your paychecks, get benefits, stimulus checks, tax returns up to two days earlier with direct deposit. Plus, they have over 60 free 
fee, oh, excuse me, fee-free ATMs at any location, at many locations like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, CVS, and more. Um, that's more than the top three national banks combined. So even with that, when you're dealing with a fee-free ATM, a lot of times if you, uh, I know with traditional banks, if you go to another ATM, oh, not they only. they're going to hit you for the three. Come on. At you least. get charged by the bank that you uh, that you bank with plus the ATM that you're at as well. Who got time to be giving away free money like that? I don't. I don't either, Angel. Okay, so that is why I like to use Chime because I'm not being charged a bunch of fees when I am able to go to 60,000 uh, 60, different fee-free ATMs. Um, turn on alerts to let you know when your card is used and instantly block uh, your card if something seems fishy. And when you sign up for a Chime spending account, you can enroll in an optional savings account and grow your savings automatically with a 0.50% annual fee yield. That's 10 times the national average. Um, join the millions on Chime. Sign up takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Apply now at Chime.com slash SK. SK. That is Chime.com slash SK. SK. Chime is a financial technology company. Company Banking services provided by the Bank Corp Bank or Strive Bank NA members, FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases. Limits start at $20 and may increase up to $200 by Chime. Early deposit, early direct deposit depends on the payer. Out of network cash withdrawal fees apply. Third party and cash deposit fees may apply. Go to chime.com slash SK for S-K. details. Josh, make sure to try, chop that little piece oh, of I'm us. It. It's got to have Because Angel, it's it, we, I, I, I was rewatching it during the ad, and our joy, our collective <laughs> joy. <laughs> For that moment when Angel hit it, it was mm-hmm. just, it was precious. Angel was like, <laughs> she's like them old Ford commercials. You remember when they used to jump? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody oh. should freeze her like. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, anyway, congratulations, Angel. I knew it was only a matter of time because Angel's sheer determination. Uh-huh. Out of sheer determination, her body's going to be like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to do it now or in a year. Yeah. She's not going to stop until she gets it. She Whew. said, I'm going to practice every day. Until yes. Until yes. I get it. And it happens. That's <laughs> believing yourself. But back to Malice. Malice in the palace. So, oh, man. Mm. rewind all the way back. Ben Wallace lost his brother. So, he's a little pissed. Uh, the Pacers are going for a championship. Mm-hmm. Ron Artest said he wanted to retire. He didn't feel right. He had a lot of anxiety and depression. Right. Uh, Jamal Tinsley telling Ron Artest to go get his foul. What? Yeah. Why yeah. he did that is beyond me. Listen. But I get it. Um, the perfect storm of those things leads to the foul. Right. Okay? The foul leads to uh, a, a, a kerfuffle. Yeah. Skirmish. Mm-hmm. But Ron Artest saying the reason he laid on the scores table <laughs> is because he was in therapy and he was trying to slow time down. But Ben Wallace seeing that as disrespect yes. is that's such a microcosm of life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This man is trying to calm himself down mm-hmm. so he doesn't do nothing crazy because he's up, he's anxious, he's, you know, gritting. Ben Wallace sees it one way, he's throwing, you know, uh, bands. headbands and stuff. And then the guy saying, the fans are going to do what you do. Absolutely. So they're like, oh, you throw stuff at them. We going to throw stuff, right? And that leads that's to. That's where I'm going to stick beside him, came by. Literally. Come on, he did. So beside him. The, the dude, J- John Green. I believe his name is John Green. The uh, dude the one who, who threw, threw the it. cup, right? And we're going to get back to him oh later. Oh, my God. The worst human. One of the worst people ever. Him and that little boy who came on the uh, uh, floor. First of all, oh, the fact, the, the delusion. Yes. In your mind. Yes. To run onto a court. Yes. Where a man, I believe Ron Artest is 6'5", six, 6'7". Six, yes. Yeah, Cop Diesel. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fight me an NBA player. The joy I had watching that dude get socked. Ron yes. Artest was like, bop. Oh, I didn't put two yes. and two together that they were interviewing him. Oh, me neither. Yes. He looked very different. Oh, oh yeah. he looked the exact same to me. He looked oh. old. I thought it was his father. I mean, yeah, he's a lot older, but his mentality is the exact same age as well. Oh, absolutely. You see how he took no responsibility for I that? Was, he said they did a loyal fan very wrong. I was like, that's how you see this. That's he what you been, took away from this? He should have been slept. He should have not remembered. Oh, Jermaine O'Neal. Oh, Jermaine O'Neal's slide punch 
when I saw that, I was like, this is crazy. Because uh, yes. I remember watching that, and he lucky he slipped, like the dude said. Yeah. But he still knocked him. Oh, he still he popped him. full momentum. Oh. He had a haymaker about to come across the temple. It is very, um, see, why he tastes. Be oh. why he tastes. And not to say, because there were black folk up in there acting a goddamn Yo, fool. The dude who threw him. the chair. Oh, my. Um, men try to run out. Yeah, he was, he was like, like, okay. <laughs> this is a terrible <laughs> <laughs> He knew. He said, now, if anybody going to get arrested for this, <laughs> it'll be me. It, they'll be like, he threw the drink. He was on the, the floor, and he threw the chair. <sighs> but the audacity as a sports fanatic, this is probably one reason why going to the University of Kentucky, I kind of abhorred the basketball team mm -hmm. because of the fans, not yeah. because of the basketball team. But the audacity to think because the team that you are rooting for, because they're having a rift with the team that they're playing against, that you have the right to do something physical to the opposing team is it baffles me. Baps. The entitlement of a fan yes. to be like, I'm going to throw something at you because I don't like what's happening in a game. In a game. I can understand booing. I can understand um, I can understand yelling. All the things that are typical at a sporting yeah. event. But to think that you have a right to cross that line and be physical with a player I just, I'm like, y'all are bat S H I T crazy. And then get defended by the commissioner. To That's save the part. The league. That's the part that pissed me off, right? Because when I was watching this in real time, I was like, these fans are gonna get in trouble, mm -hmm. right? They threw stuff. They agitated him. Like, obviously, Ron Artest probably shouldn't went to the stand, but. Self defense, and he punched the wrong guy. He definitely uh, did. Bless that man's heart. Oh, uh, who the guy I, who got socked out and wasn't him, and then John Green being like, "The only thing I regret is that he didn't trip him. harder." But the league being like, "Well, we can't make the fans the bad guy because we have to save the rep rep reputation of the NBA." And, and there's sales. more, the money yeah. of the oh, NBA. Yeah, absolutely. All that, so by making the fence wrong, and the police were like, Ron Artest absolutely deserved to sock that dude out. Yeah. He came onto the court with clenched fists. Yeah. Defend yourself. And the fact that they got, you know, um, uh, none of the criminal charges, right, mm -hmm. shows you how different the actual what happened and the result versus what the league did. Um, and, and, and Ron Artest and them didn't even think they shouldn't have been punished, right? But the crazy, the 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 whole season and, and you know all that stuff was was wild, and the and the NBA not doing much to those fans. But when you think about the money mm -hmm. and also the narrative and what the media plays in, because uh, Stephen Jackson said this, he was like, the media sports center they're showing the the cut up version. They're of not course. showing Ryder Test getting hit with the cup. They just show him running and attacking a fan. Right. Right. And let me tell you what pissed me off the most about this documentary. Okay, I can't wait. White people in the media calling these men thugs oh. in after they were attacked. I I was like, I was relaxing watching the documentary mm -hmm. before a show. I sat up and was like clenched teeth. I didn't watch because it was just like yet. thug, 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 and it was just like, how do the players who get attacked become the thugs mm, when they should have been the victim? Culture. Oh. And especially, especially since we didn't, we didn't ever see the full scale of the footage. Right. We right. only saw the clip of the fight. Nothing that went on that the moments that led up to it or everything after. There was a lot of exclusive footage in that. Yes. So the entire portrayal of what had happened globally, not I mean it could be globally, but to that scale throughout the nation of the media was only depicted from the, the seconds that was that was uh, that was shown that. over the, over and over again. This is what I appreciate about the generation that is under us, Josh's gen, uh, generation and my son's generation, is that they are very particular about the words that are being used, and they yeah. will correct like things that we. <laughs> Hoodlum has always been offensive, so I'm not trying to say that it's not. Thug has always been, when used in a way to try to tear someone down, has always been offensive. Mm. But um, I think a lot of times during that time, I think a lot of people, it probably went 
I don't want to say went over their head, but they accepted it for what it was. Like, yeah, these basketball players are fighting these fans unnecessarily. They are thugs, right? Absolutely. Right. Um, but I know, like today's generation, they are very particular about you use the exact, the appropriate word, mm-hmm. and you say it. The victims yes. of the basketball, the, they were the victims. The victims. Yes. The people attacked. The people attacked. Are the uh, were the basketball players, yeah. not right. the fans. And, and the, go ahead, Josh. I was going to say the entire uh, process of them trying to clear the players out for their safety mm-hmm. was never iterated by anybody in the past. Never. And you somebody know, had to call the police because there were no security. There were three cops. officers. Where are the event people? Oh, there were three police officers that were about to spray down. Uh, Ron Artest. Uh, no, not Ron Artest. Jermaine. The, he was the one in the cast. No, Reggie Miller was protecting Ron Artest. And he no, was, no, 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 but he was the one who almost got arrested. Yeah, thought, oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right. He was like, he was like, who are you? <laughs> he was like, I didn't know that it was him. And that clip of the dude being like, how you don't know Reggie Miller on the Pacers? <laughs> First of all, Jackson, his last name is Steve Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. He was my favorite part I of the whole him. documentary. He said, oh, I felt real good. He said, I held him down. I felt real good <laughs> about running into I'm the sand. I yeah. was sitting beside him. He said, I was like, yeah. I, I, I loved that those fans got punched in the yeah. face. <laughs> it gave me great, especially the dude, not the dude Ryan Tess hit uh, by mistake, mm. but the dude who walked down, oh, yeah. Yeah. I rewound that so many times. To see Jermaine O'Neal just slide by. Oh, and Ron Artest punched him. I oh, like yes. watching that guy get punched. And the arrogance of his news interview after, I've got to get my face uh, x-rayed because I'm injured. I'm injured. And then had them take him out on a gurney. You you were able, with a neck brace, you were able to talk to the camera, sitting up straight. Be, all he had was a busted lip. That was that the most And destroyed improper. pride. Yes, absolutely. But he was like, oh, I'm going to milk this. In his mind, he's thinking, I'm going to get all this money. Yes. From the NBA. Oh, I'm going to take all their money. I'm yes. sure he probably used some explicitives and uh, racial slurs. Absolutely. But um, so uh, Jackson, he was my favorite part. And then the part that resonated with me the most as a person was the fact that um, J.O. Those are Jermaine O'Neal? Yes. That he was the one. And, and, and also Reggie Miller. That I feel suffered the most because of it. And they were probably the two um, level-headedest people yes. dealing with everything happening on Absolutely. the court. Absolutely. Ron Artest, or Jermaine O'Neal being like, uh, Ron Artest uh, asking for a trade was a coward move. Yeah. And then Ron Artest being like, I was a coward. I didn't know how to handle it. I used to handle things like by running away from them. I get that. Mm-hmm. Like, I really do. I'm not, you know, uh, condoning it. But I understand the psyche. And then to watch Ron Artest win a championship, yes. I never thought about, uh, again, I watch the NBA a lot, but you 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 forget who was good if they didn't win. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't remember, like, that team was really good, but they didn't win. You remember who won. Yeah. So it didn't click in my mind that that was Reggie Miller's last two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that window where the Pistons won was, like, a window for, that was closed oh, quickly. Yeah. yeah. Right? So the Pistons got both of those championships in both of those years. Yeah. Um, and Jermaine O'Neal being like, his career never recovered. No. Ron Artest won a championship. Steven Jackson won a championship. Jermaine O'Neal got nothing. Reggie Miller ended up retiring. I mean, it. let me tell you. it. Uh, <laughs> this reminds me of when we were trying to change our flight on United. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what I was like. When you are. Trying to do what's right, right, and you're trying to help out the people around you, but yes. you get the short end of the stick. I was like, oh, <laughs> I wanted to make them a ring and be like, you are a champion. <laughs> you are a champion. I, it just, uh, it hurt my heart. That was the part that, like, more than all, more than the narrative that they spun in the media, because that's what the media does. Mm. Um, even more than the the psyche of a fan, because I'm like I said, going to the University of Kentucky, we have the craziest fans. Yeah, they think wild. they own the players. They think they are the team. They act like they be in practice. Yes, I'm like, ain't nobody seeing you. Ain't nobody look, you at home beating your meat watching the goddamn gon show. Probably took a blue chew and ain't done nothing. Playing the trombone. Playing the trombone. Ain't done nothing to play no sport. And, and listen, you better be glad you got that blue chew to give you the confidence to be who you want to be. Okay. And Blue Chew is the sponsor of today's episode. Listen, the summer 
It's all about a uh, hot girl summer, but what about a hard boy summer, right? Hard boy summer. What about that, right? You can take Blue Chew any time, day or night. So you can plan ahead and be ready when the opportunity arises, all right? Now, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but it's in chewable tablets <laughs> at a fraction of the cost, yes? The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive a, your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA <laughs> and prepared and shipped directly to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it comes to time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special offer for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code. SK. SK. At checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code SK. SK. To receive your first month free, visit bluechew.com for more details and, and um, important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the end result is something you'll both enjoy. So get your man to sign up. Um, here's what I want to finish with on this topic. Let's finish with it. Then. I also want to have a note. So maybe I can go first and then you can finish. Cause you no, I, I'm, I'm not saying we, I'm not ending it. I oh, just okay. don't want to forget this. Okay. John Green, the oh. man who started the riot. The man isn't it such a like perfect, perfect example of America mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the white man who started the whole thing faced the least amount of consequences. Yeah. Right. I know he's charged and all that, but Ron Artest's reputation and championship, uh, Reggie Miller's whole career. I mean, and it's not guaranteed they win the championship, but you know, now you'll never know. Um, Jermaine O'Neal, all of that, the shame and cloud over their thing, started by a white man who faced a a a small percentage mm -hmm. and lived in relative anonymity for the whole thing. Because like, I didn't even think about this. If you don't live in Detroit, I don't. You don't follow what happens to the Absolutely people. Absolutely not. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. the fact that the attorney or whoever was, I don't know if he's a public defender or whatever. Oh, uh, the, the the degree of separation that he was from the person in that amazing. Blew my mind. He dated my neighbor. I knew his face, so I was the one who I identified. Went over to his house. Yes, John. You you know you're messed up, right? <laughs> right. You know I saw you. I saw you because I remember you wearing that blue jacket before. And thank God that they had that man. And rather than somebody else, because he kept saying the the media kept trying to people kept trying to get me to see this a certain way. Yes. Instead, he went through the a thousand pages of testimonies of uh, eyewitness. Um, uh, uh, I'll say testimonies again because I can't remember the word. Looking at all those tapes to try to identify to be able to actually press charges against the fans. Mm. It because nobody else was going to go after the fans. No. The, the NBA weren't going to come uh, out with harsher uh, penalties for people who attend their events no. and act unruly. They were just like, we're going we're gonna to penalize these black boys and we're going to move on. Yes. So thank God that the guy who was over, um, you know, investigating that entire situation was willing to, like, actually do the work. Yes. Because he could have easily been like... There's no way to I looked at the tape. It's too pixelated. I can't identify anybody. And he would, listen, this was not 4K. No, it was no. not. This was like when we was watching uh, <laughs> Home Alone 2 on VHS <laughs> yes. back in the yes, 90s. Yes, it was. was. The 4 by 3 crops. It was just the... And that was 2004. 2004. At the time not we were watching that, that was like, boy, I got me a yeah. clear TV. We yeah. still had fat back TVs back then. Mm -hmm. I know oh, I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I did. Truck. My first apartment, that mm -hmm. TV had a fat butt. <laughs> oh, dragging that wagon. But that is the thing. Whenever you are someone who has a lot of money, uh, the stakes are always so much higher yes. for you. The The bounce back is going to be so much harder. And uh, I think people take advantage of that. People who don't have a lot to lose. That man had a German Shepherd in a two-car garage. That, you know to what I'm his, saying? To his name. To his name. That was it. Not to and say he can't be proud of that. but better than the, the way the media was talking about 
there were so many racial undertones yeah. that had nothing to do with the the thug is a is a that's a word that's the nigga you can say nigga without oh, saying yeah, it absolutely right because they say the rap goes these thugs 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 Trump thugs this thug that absolutely uh that's the that's the dog whistle for racism but then you you throw a cup at a person and which is assault right yeah he goes to defend himself hits the wrong guy right. Then the narrative is these guys with all this money and their rap music, they mm-hmm. should be treated. They should be know how to behave, be behave, right? Behave like right. what does that have to do with somebody getting attacked and and defending themselves that they get paid all this? That have nothing to do with nothing. That's Let some stuff t- you was already feeling. That you was just what you were already feeling. Even if Ron Ortiz, Ortiz did not run into the stands. I love Ron Ortiz. Yeah, he's, he's 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 is that not his name? He's, he's a Dominican baseball prospect. Okay, what's this man's name? Ron Ortiz. No, oh, that's what I said. <laughs> Even if that man. Ron Ortiz. Oh, yeah, that's O R T I Z. Yeah. And this is A R T E S T. That's what I said. Um, even had he not run into the stands mm-hmm. and punched the wrong man, him laying on the score table, table, the media, even if that's where it ended, yes. where he got hit and he was just like, Absolutely. I'm out of the game. They would have still been like the unprofessionalism Absolutely. of Ron Artes. Yes. See, the hip hop community is not teaching how to be respectful in other people's houses. And you know what they did right after that? NBA dress code. Yes, that's all that. Right after that, Allen Iverson, and they blamed Allen Iverson for Allen Iverson came in the league with braids. Mm. I freaking love Allen Iverson for a lot of things, uh-huh. mainly the way he played basketball. But he allowed black people to be black the way they wanted to be, mm-hmm. which was tattoos. Braids, baggy clothes, don't give a f attitude, and the NBA was like, "You gonna wear shirts and ties?" Uh huh. And and part of that is, listen, we can't play basketball the way you can, and we're gonna pay you, but you're still gonna do things the way we say so because we say so. You know what I mean? It's a it's a it's a it's a way to still control. It's all about control. It's that's all, all about it control. Is. Like we pay you, we own you, right? And that's why I hate the term owner. And even soccer, it's even worse. They buy and sell players. They literally say buy and sell. Yeah, I mean, uh, trading is the, is the same. It's all the- trading. The whole auction, I mean, auction, the whole combine is big auction block energy. At 100%. Big auction block energy. And it's a shame that it's, I mean, it's a, a blessing and a curse. It's a two edged sword because. People of color, specifically black men in basketball and football, we dominate those sports. So we're the ones that are being traded and sold, yes. but we're not the ones that have the decision making power to protect um, the players in the games because it is all about control. It is all about, listen, the only reason I'm paying you this much is because I want you here so I can win and I can make myself more money, but I don't want you to have the confidence to make your own decisions. And guess what? If, if you're a player, right, and mm-hmm. I'm the owner or vice versa, you're the owner, I'm the player, you can cut me, trade me, sign me at a drop of a hat. Mm-hmm. No warning. A lot of, like Ron Artest was saying, he got traded on the bus ride. Yeah. I, you, you, you on the team, you cut me or trade me. I'm supposed to maintain professionalism. Right. This is part of the game. Right. But if I say, I don't want to play for Angel's team anymore. I want to play for Josh's team. You can't go to Oh, he is a diva. He's yeah. not professional. It's like, why do, Why can the team do the same? Why is, Why don't both people have to have respect? The team, especially in the NFL, they'll cut you in the middle of a play. Oh, yeah. They own your life. They're like, if you want to play this sport that uh, actually we need you to play because it'll be boring if you're not here. Listen. It's going to be like watching uh, football as golf. Like, right. it's just going to be real, real boring and slow. <laughs> Um, if you, uh, if we don't have you, this is going to be boring, but I just don't want you to have control of it. I want to own you. That's why it's called ownership. My only control is I'm going to tell you how to dress and you're going to be respectable. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, don't that sound familiar? That sounds very When you come familiar. in the house, you're going to look respectable. Don't boy. look me in the eye. Right? <laughs> don't talk to me. And that's why, you know, as black people, to me, ownership is so important. Yes. Even though it is Doggone difficult. Mm-hmm. The Kevon Stage Studios app. I could call a white man right now mm-hmm. and probably have, and this is no joke. I literally have a person I could call, could have at least a million dollars infused into this app, if not five or ten, mm-hmm. right? 
Uh, I told this story before, and I'll tell it again real quick. When I was struggling with the tour the first year before yeah. it crossed over, Melissa's still working. She's about to get laid off. And an investor, the man I probably could call, was like, I will give you $250,000 cash right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll just own the tour. And well, I'll of pay course. you. Mm -hmm. You know, your wife will be squared away. That was a moment where I was like, you dirty dog. No. I sure could use that. And that'd make my life a lot easier right now. But if you're going to give me that cash right now, sight unseen, without seeing no nothing but what the ticket's been selling, then it's eva it's valuation because mm -hmm. I didn't watch my shark tape. Okay, come on. Valuation is probably 10x mm -hmm. that. And the ownership, the value is probably 15x for me personally. So that's part of the reason why <clears throat> we own, right? Yeah. So I can say, you know what, Angel, I want to make a show for you and I don't have to get nobody's approval. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think in our own way, that's how we fight racism, tropes, stereotypes, all that stuff. Even if we're doing on a very small scale, you know, right now the app is on a small scale. It will grow. Trust me. It will Relative grow. to conglomerates, but it's huge to majority of the world. You know, that's a fantastic point. You know, most people don't have their own streaming service. You know, you're right. And honestly, Josh said this earlier. What'd you say, Josh? I'm consistently overly ambitious. Mm -hmm. Right. I only compare the app to Netflix and Disney Plus. <laughs> you can compare it to anybody. What does a, anybody? Disney Plus and Netflix. How do we beat them? Most 250 people. million subscribers globally. Okay. I How do we get to 15 million? <laughs> What's our angle? Probably only, probably less than, not even only, probably less than 1% of the world. Probably point, point. 2% of the world's population or 0.02% of the world's population owns a streaming app. That's like, a good point. That's you know what point. I'm saying? So it has, I'm not argue it has TV quality content. TV quality content. 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The Melissa's dating show. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm so very proud of her. <laughs> she really, and she's good on camera. Mm -hmm. Like she not only created, produced it, cast it, hired, the, like literally did everything. Then she gets on camera and is the talent. And you know, Angel, them, that's usually not in both people. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're that type of person as well because you did the same thing for the uh, crafts and cocktails and all your But I stuff. was drunk, so I take no responsibility for what happened on camera. But please continue. But uh, to <laughs> finish time. out the Malice in the Palace. Please. The thing that was the most interesting was uh -huh. perspective. Yes. Because the media frame the story that way yes it was framed that way mm -hmm. if the media had said fans are out of control yep. we need to find this fan this should be about player safety yes. the nba has done a poor job protecting the player yes right but espn is in bed with the nba right they want the rights to broadcast mm -hmm. those games so they're not going to go against the nba no. but imagine if it had been look how wild fans have gotten find the guy who threw this find the people the uh, put these people in jail who came on the stands we need more security then it would the, the players would have been praised mm -hmm. but instead they're vilified and then they're villains and now this is what nearly 20 years now mm -hmm. it's like 17 years from the time that happened um and their lives are forever they might get a little modicum of like relief reputation wise mm -hmm. but that money is gone that chance to win a championship is gone that all of that other stuff is gone the nba is worth way more now than it was then those individual yeah. teams are worth way more now than they were there. And it's just so frustrating that, like you said, black people get the short end of the stick all the goddamn all the time. time. <laughs> all the goddamn on time. It does. It hurts my heart. Will Smith on a streaming service. Does he? I don't think he does. I don't think so. Westbrook puts, it's fine. No disrespect, my boy. You know I love you. You know what it is. Twin. I think they put their own, con they, I, I think they put their content out on other services. Yeah. Huh. They just license their content. Yeah, they, right? license, they license it to make the, the money back. Red book. Table Talk ain't on Will Smith mm -mm. Dot com. It's on our Will Smith book. It's on, <laughs> it's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. now, now they get, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they get bred it up. They oh, bred yeah. it up. They, get they made fairly. a choice. Yeah. They made a choice. They made you a choice early. I mean, but. Uh, KOSS is going to be licensing some stuff here too. We going to be, it's going to be everywhere. Everywhere. Every time I mention the streaming service at the shows, the roar that people, you know, 
that you have, I'd be like, man, these people, we, man, the stage crew is great. They are great. Let me tell y'all real quick before we go. I want to say this. I, I told Angel, Melissa, and Josh, we was at the uh, uh, Carolines, mm-hmm. right? And the the club manager came back and was like, can I just tell you something about, first of all, he was saying your team is good, like mm-hmm. your tour manager, which is Greg. Greg Everybody is amazing. On time, great, per- professional, quick responding and all that too. He said, but the other thing that I like about you is your audience is reflective of you. Very much He was so. like, I am not won't name the key comedian, but he was like, there's some comedians who come in here with angry energy on stage mm-hmm. and their audience has angry energy. Mm-hmm. Your audience is like, and I've had this compliment multiple times. This is why I'm sharing it. They were so funny. They were so um, joyous. He was like, look, I misjudged how many people were going to come to this show mm-hmm. and the time. It's my bad. And we had to tell people, hey, your food's going to take a little longer. This ticket's going to be a little longer. And he, and he said the audience overwhelmingly was like, it's okay. You guys are doing the best. We're having a good time. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. And he was like, when usually audiences don't have a reason to be mad and they're mad, Mm -hmm. your audience actually has a reason to be upset Mm -hmm. and be happy. And he was like, y'all come back, please come back. back. Well, that is a reflection of you, Mr. On stage. Oh, come on. Angel. It is. You have a very, now listen, Kevin, me and Kevin are best friends. So I have (laughs) seen Kevin's dark side. Have but, you? Absolutely. But overwhelmingly, you do have a very positive, very loving energy. That is the reason why I enjoy working with both you and Joshua. Oh, can you tell them what you said about me the other day about um, I was supposed to be a diva on tour? Oh, because we did talk about this on the podcast. I said to Kevin, I want you to know that they were wrong. She did say that. The people who said that Kevin is a diva on tour, he is not in the least bit. I try to tell you, Angel. Listen, I needed to know. You, I try to. T- I said I'm a I'm a easygoing guy. He has been very. Uh, he's been very easygoing. He's been very accommodating to us. Now, does he sit in first class? He does. Absolutely. Does Angel be paying for her upgrade when she needs to sit in first class? Absolutely. Absolutely. I get. Listen, I understand. I'm getting too old to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yes, I can say for him to be the Beyonce of the group, mm. <laughs> he be treating Michelle and Kelly really nice. <laughs> he do. You really do. Thank and you, I appreciate Angel. it. By the I way, do. Josh had more thoughts on the malice. I didn't want to. I just really up. wanted to cover the production quality. Oh, the documentary? Of the documentary. The <sighs> interviews, how they framed it was kind of experimental. Yes. But it was beautifully shot. The coloring of it, you really felt the mood. It was. Even how they edited the fight scene with the music. I, at first, I was like, oh, I feel like they're overhyping it. But then you're like, no, this was actually terrifying for players. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you felt when you watched it. I, You know, I didn't think about that. First of all, the doc feels longer than it really is. It's only a little bit over an hour. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about the coloring aspect. But then the, the color, of, especially like, like Jim Gray. Muted, uh, yeah, a lot of gray muted tones. Yes, it was almost like, dis- almost distorted. And it was even like underlit a lot of yeah. times too. Like even the subject was probably underlit than with some of the backgrounds, like the, the trophy the trophy frame. Mm-hmm. It seemed like the trophies had more highlights than like, uh, I forgot who was in that scene, but um, it was a good time. Also, I think they shot in one of the Spectrum houses that we that we did. Ah! I thought it looked familiar. I noticed that fig tree. I was like, I remember that corner. I <laughs> thought it looked familiar. That that, that's a production. That's a Your big production. Your notice house. of detail just got for this documentary got me even more excited about the unruly cousins. EP oh yeah. Well, as a photographer, videos. like those frames, I was like, these are beautiful. I like when documentaries take the time to have the interview pleasing to the eye not just like a talking head yes. on a white background absolutely mm-hmm. it's yeah. like they staged it in a way staged it framed it lit it mm-hmm. in a way to help uh tell the story yeah. the way they wanted to tell the story because the nba could have made a documentary about that and made the players look worse mm-hmm. and i love that they even though it seemed longer than it was i love that they took the time to make sure they set the tone of why this happened even when they were saying most of the season holders had left yeah the Even people that. at the top started to trickle down. Those who had been drinking were already drunk, started trickling down to the closer seats. I was like, now thinking back to it, like that helped really help you understand. Because, yeah, people paying thousands upon thousands of dollars are not about to risk losing 
their their <laughs> seats, they're going to be like, well, I'm not And if, if I'm if I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, the game, I think I remember them saying the game wasn't close enough for Mm-mm. it to get to that point. They were up by 15 points. That's what 15 I'm points with a couple like of minutes a one left. Or two point. People were literally like, I'm going to go beat the traffic. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. And they were still dunking hard. Faces <laughs> were still playing. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Josh is gonna. Uh, he's gonna. What do you? Is it a producing? What do you? What? It's not A and R, is it? I mean, A and R executive kind of producing because it's kind of arranging the pieces of the overall aspect, not physically producing. Um, Josh is gonna A and R the unruly cousins EP. He is executive producing. He's gonna get the beats. Uh-huh. You know, me and Angel, we write our own stuff. I'm so excited. He shared with me what his concept is. Has he shared with you what he's saying about doing the the little two piece? Oh yeah, he did share it to me. That can we do my grit song on there, just as like an interlude? I think yeah. I I think such a vibe. We'll have the uh, his name is Kev on stage interlude. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Here's the thing interlude to throw back to the show. Absolutely. The fact, can I say what your concept Yeah, go is? ahead. This is stage crew. Josh wants to do two EPs, right? Yeah. Like six R&B songs and about six hip hop. I cannot wait. You know what's going to be funny? What if this, this would be the funniest thing in the world, right? <laughs> if, we, if we did this and this was like wildly more successful than anything it, we ever it, did. It's very, about to be. we did something that just understand. for fun. Do you, you realize the musicians in our network that want to be a part of this? Do you realize the musicians that I am? That's what to say. I, I am. am a, a, I play instruments. Angel plays. She sings. I'm a lyricist. Oh, yes. We write. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me this is just for fun. And this is. And it was really good. This is my naked voice. Let Darius Scott come in and 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 auto tune me up and mm-hmm. sing backgrounds. I'm gonna sound like D'Angelo. <laughs> they gonna be like, can I you do this live? No. Yes, you can. By the time I go sing. live, y'all will be singing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I gotta make it so popular that when we perform it mm. and we do a concert tour, Unruly Cousins <laughs> tour, <laughs> oh, yeah. of music, I, I'm gonna be playing the bass. I cannot play- wait. I told Josh, I said, now let, let me let you know on that hip hop, I am coming for people's throats we heard with it. my lyrics. We heard it on the on the Toby parody. And don't that, don't don't sleep. Oh no, that Angel was a writes. thirty minute just. Did, did, did. Let me get some time, and we get a good topic, something foolish. This is gonna be great. Lil Duval has made a lot of money, a He's whole li- lot. Uh, he and has really a the plane. Only one doing it. Smile B, smile B, come on. He has a plane. A home in the Bahamas. Yes. Music money? Long. And uh, Long. I'm excited. I'm really Cousins EP. I, I saw this on Twitter. and uh, Not on Twitter. I saw this on the internet. Let me tell you this. And this is what the blessing that. You saw where? On the internet. Peter Kane. We have, we have a Mama Dorothy interlude? <laughs> Come on. With Peter uh, Kane? And thank you to all the stage crew that uh, attended. The first choir rehearsal. Yes, you guys were amazing. So talented. Yeah, Kevin watched it. He was uh, he was impressed by some, disappointed I, by others. I, um, <laughs> but uh, we will have another rehearsal. Please be ready. Um, because I really, I don't know what city has done the best as of yet. Philly still. Philly's Philly, in the Philly, league. yeah, Philly, it was in the league because they were actually able to hold the harmonies. Mm. Yes, they were. Yeah, so, uh-huh. Uh, the real wealth is not about money. It's about not having to go to meetings, not having to spend time with jerks, not being locked into status games, not feeling like you have to say yes, not being worried about others claiming your time and energy. Real wealth is freedom. The fact that we can do an EP because we want to and because it will be fun there's so much more freedom when you're doing it out of just sheer enjoyment. Yeah. Also, before we go, Angel's sister oh, at the Baltimore show mm. was unruly. joy. She was unruly. Oh, she twerked all through my she set. She checked all the boxes for an unruly cousin. She, when I was like, the funniest thing about it, she was, she thought she was helping. She literally did. She thought she was helping. And when uh, she was still like, Angel, I was encouraging. I had to call Angel out to the stage. Angel! (laughs) My mother said, wait a minute. You had to come to the stage? I said, Mama, he was in the middle of his set. And he, I heard him screaming my name, and I thought, okay, where's the blicky? I got to shoot somebody. But then I started hearing him call my sister's name as well. 
she was high out of her mind on pain <laughs> medication and and drank and uh yeah she called me the, the two days later or the next day trying not to cry <laughs> From embarrassment. She, she said, a she chill, Kevin. just like you. Mm-hmm. She a little she, bit stiffer. <laughs> she a little bit older than me. All right, guys. We got to go, but don't forget, Angel hit that scream challenge. She did. I did. In a skirt. <laughs> I'm going to clip it. I'm going to clip Angel, it. Angel it hit it, and I... I am very proud. Thank you. All right, uh, Patreon, we will see you later this week. Not sure what day yet. The rest of y'all will see you next week. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at the conference. Goodbye. I hope one day people be like, y'all really, y'all really earned everything you got. Somebody tweeted me the other day. She said, I hope Kevin on stage don't ever make it to a billionaire because I'd hate to have to disown him. What? But I'll do it. You know, the whole Ether issue was playing. Oh. And I was like, what about 999 million? She was like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> as, long, as long as you stay under that B. You stay underneath that. You stay under that B, you good. Um, yeah. So in that type of situation, <laughs> you want to come like you trying to take somebody's job. I, I realize every opportunity is an opportunity. Yes. There. Yes. Mm-hmm. And these are the rooms I wanted. This is how I want to skip the line. This is the way. They're getting to the people who are like, you know what? Let's give you a hundred million. Really? After a table read? That's how my mind works. Um. So yes, definitely for something like that, you want to, um, you want to be as uh, well prepared as possible. Still loose, and what I mean by loose is that like. You feel comfortable, like, listening to what the other person is saying, not having so Mm -hmm. many choices made that if somebody gives you something different that makes you react differently that you don't feel comfortable. Got it. You know what I'm saying? So aware enough to to respond differently. If they make a choice I wasn't expecting. Yeah. But it's like improv but not improv, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Improv within the structure of the lines. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. So that they, like... Wait a second. Oh, so you does this. You do this. And you be like, yeah, I be doing Joshua, it. what is your deal, bro? Hmm? Joshua's a good addition to the team. Thanks for having me. I, I really just really enjoy him. him. I really love it here. I just be like, you know what? One of the best. He is a, he's great. I like him. But Angel? Well, thank you. Angel. Angel was like... When the Spurs, David Robinson broke his foot, mm-hmm. and then they sucked that season, and they were able oh, to draft God. Tim Duncan, that's what Angel was like. I, if I knew these people, I'd be like, come on. You're... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Woo! Pass another COVID test, baby. Flying high. <laughs> when did you take one? Yesterday. That's how I was crying in that Grits video. Oh, from that. Oh, I, from figured. That I figured after all the COVID tests I've taken, my nose would be like, oh, I'm used to I this. I still get anxious taking them. So do I. I, I even though I feel fine, I taste Especially fine. Especially with the vaccine, like, I'm ah, I, asymptomatic. I literally, I, I, I literally, everyone, because so much would change. If that COVID test just came back positive right now, you guys would freak out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak, freak out. out. Because we would be off for two weeks. What are you talking about? Low key, Josh, I ain't gonna hold you. That would not be the worst. Thing. I am not gonna hold you. I was like, since I'm vaxxed, I probably wouldn't have that much health. Like, a two weeks off would not be the worst thing in my life. Yeah, I'd be like, so kids, uh, I, Marcus, I hope you enjoyed your first two days of school. Everybody's shut down. We're shut down. I'm gonna go house. stay at the Four Seasons for a couple of weeks, just so quarantine so safely. So quarantine, right? I'm gonna take it the Four Seasons. You got the one with the spa, boy. fully, fully. Uh, I need everything. Fully that's how you know we're tired. When you're like, you know, if I was off for two weeks. Even the money in Houston is going to be a book, a big show. Is it, how big is the Houston show? I want to go to Houston. Four fifty. Oh, so it's show. Baltimore. Another four fifty. Yeah. Let's go, Kev. Five shows. Six. Or six. I know it. No, they, they, they. That's another one they snuck in. I, I promise you. I said don't add no I'm more. Not nothing. Two I'm not shows? asking you to be like. No, no. I'm I just saying. Jeans. I'm going. I'm, I'm going just saying, to you Beverly to Hills right now. Did you already sell for out what? the four? I'm burning that building to the ground. Which, 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 <laughs> agency. Uh, I hit the turkey leg hut. They didn't hit me back. I DM them. We made a whole video about them, didn't we? <gasps> yeah. They didn't hit us back. They hit me. We sh- and I was going to wear a whole suit with the top hat. I had a whole bit working. Yeah, so first of all, I just saw what I look like on camera, and you're welcome. <laughs> Go 
Come on, hold on. Single her out. Come Yo, on, well, Angel. I wasn't even, I didn't feel prepared. And then I looked, I just saw the thing. God I said, says, no, come as you it. are, though, Angel, even and when I, you're unprepared. Listen, and I did. And I did. <laughs> And how? Come on. I did not think it was going to come together like this. I was throwing on skirts left and right today, and none would work. And you made it work like it. Like it. Come on, Josh. Like <laughs> it. <laughs> like it. I feel like I'm... This okay, woman so. said you're welcome. That is big poom poom energy. Big poom poom. Big poom poom energy. Wag wag my youth. <laughs> I've been eating Jamaican food once a week, by the way. From that spot? Man, that oxtail from that place, I don't care about the health oh, benefits. We're going there. I wish I knew what Jet text me. The one you the one you put us on to. Oh, okay. For the, uh, we should go to that one spot what's Thursday. The, name of it? the mukbang. Yeah. The mukbang. I get the large oxtail, rice and pea. I would Aki and Which one I put y'all on to because I eat at a couple. That's the reason why. The I'm one like, you we order when we had the, the Jamaican food mukbang at my house. We go to the one on, uh, on Thursday in the A. That oh, yeah, there? that one was. <laughs> that's where the dude had an attitude. Oh, oh this stuff is right there. Where's People the order the oxtail. Wagwan me ute. Are you ready? Yeah. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. Yeah. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another one. Here's another bank of fire. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another bank of fire. With uh, my boy Kevin stays. And that chick angel.